In this lesson, we are going to study image and inverse image. Suppose that we have a function from a set A to set B. If S is a subset of A, we define the image of S under F to be this set. It is denoted by F of capital S. This contains elements of the form F of small s for some small s in S. And take note that F of capital S is a subset of B. How do we interpret this? S is a subset of A. So this is my S. And then if we get all the images of this set S, so take note that it's possible that that set is smaller in a sense because it's possible that our function is many to one, correct? So let's say this one, f of capital S. And if I get an element small s in there, its image f of small s will be inside f of capital S. Now from our definition here, take note this is important. When do we say that an element in B is an element of F of capital S because F of S, take note, is a subset of B. When do we say that something is in F of capital S? So from this definition, I will write it here. B is an element of F of capital S whenever we can write B as F of small s for some small s capital of element of capital s so for example our set a is a set containing 1 2 3 4 b is a set containing 5 6 7 8 and f is represented as the set of ordered pairs what is the set f of 1 2 so take note from definition that when we are getting this image set, we are just getting the images. We are just getting the images of all the elements here. So therefore, this is just the set. You will just get the image of f of 1 and f of 2, correct? And the image of 1 is 6 and the image of 2 is 5. What about f of... 1, 3. So again, this is just f of 1, which is 6, and set containing f of 3. So this is 6, 8. So as a set of ordered pairs, when you are getting the image of a set, you are just getting the second coordinates of the elements here, where this will be the first coordinates. Now, suppose that our function f is from the set r to set r defined by this linear function f of x equals 2x plus 1. What is the image of the set 0, 1? So let's try to imagine what's going on. If we graph this, that is just a line with y-intercept at 1 and slope of 2 so therefore it's okay if we look at this graph what will be the images of this interval 0 1 so this part over here what is the image of this set it's going to be this one correct so it's 1 3 but of course we have to we got that from our diagram but what if we want to n determine what that is just by solving so in order to do that remember that this set f of zero one by definition this set contains everything of the form f of x where x is an element of zero one correct that is the definition of f of zero one now, if we look at this one, if x is an element of 0, 1, what can we now say about f of x? Our f of x is 2x plus 1. So, therefore, we get that 
to x is between 0 and 2, and therefore 2x plus 1 is between 1 and 3. So therefore, we have here that your f of x is going to be an element of 0, 3. We will say that f of 0, 1 is the set 1, 3. This is how we computed it and this is how we visualize it using its graph. But of course, let us really prove that the image set of 0, 1 under the function f is the set 1, 3. So first, let us show that f of 0, 1 is a subset of 1, 3. So we start by getting an arbitrary element in here. So let's call that B, and we want to show in the end that it is an element of 1, 3. The fact that B is an element of f of 0, 1, it means that B can be written as f of something where this something here is an element of 0, 1. So hence, there exists an A in 0, 1 such that b is equal to f of a but our f of a is equal to 2a plus 1 and then since a is an element of 0 1 2a plus 1 is an element of 1 3 again i will no longer write it but of course the proof is because just like what we had earlier a is between 0 and 1 our 2a will now be between 0 and 2, which would imply that 2a plus 1 is between 3 and 0. So basically, this is the scratch that we had earlier. Okay, so we have now shown that this 2a plus 1, which is our b, is an element of 1, 3. So hence, b is an element of 1, 3. And then conversely, suppose that B is an element of 1, 3. We want to show that B is an element of F of 0, 1. That is, we want to write B as the image of something in 0, 1. We want to show that B is equal to f of a for some a in 0, 1. So therefore, b is equal to 2a plus 1, and therefore, our a is equal to b minus 1 all over 2. But you still have to show that this a here is an element of 0, 1. Why is it true that a is an element of 0, 1? Because b is an element of 1, 3. Alright, so I will just say take a to be equal to b minus 1 all over 2. So since b is between 1 and 3, the some algebraic manipulations will show that b minus 1 all over 2 is between 0 and 1. We still have to show that f of a is equal to b. My f of a, which is equal to f of b minus 1 all over 2, is equal to 2 times b minus 1 all over 2 plus 1, and this is really equal to b. So thus, we have shown that b is the image of some element in 0, 1. So thus, B is an element of F of 0, 1. That is the formal proof. Next, we will now define the pre-image. So again, we have a function F from A to B. And this time around, T is a subset of your codomain. We define the pre-image of this set to be this set. It contains all elements in the domain such that the image of those elements belong 
to t. And take note that this pre-image or inverse image is a subset of your domain. Again, let us try to imagine what is happening in here. So we have a function f from a to b. And my t in here is a subset of b. So this is my t. When we want f inverse of t, we are getting a subset in the domain. So something like this. And we want this set to have the property that the images of all these sets, when you map it under f, so the image of this under f will be equal to t. So this is my set f inverse t. So when I get the image of this set under the function f, the elements are all in t. So I drew it in such a way that the pre-image is bigger than this one because again, our function f can be a many to one function. So it's possible to have two elements in here to go to the same element in this one. Let me just give a definition of what it means for an element in the domain to be in f inverse t. Using the definition, what can we say? A is an element of the pre-image of t if and only if. What is this saying? You belong in the set if and only if the image of this set belongs to t. So it's like sort of you're getting f of this, sort of like that. But again, that is not what's really happening. But I just want you to remember this. A is an element of the pre-image if and only if its image belongs to the set t. So let us consider this example. Suppose this is the set f. What is now pre-image of 6, 7? So take note that I am looking at the second coordinates and the pre-images of 6 and 7 are 2 and 3. Again, why is that? What does it mean for something to be in f inverse 6, 7? It means that when you get the images of those sets, it will be an element of 6, 7. So that's the reason why I have 6 and 7. Oops, I also have 6 and 7 here. I missed that. So therefore, what are the elements whose images are 6 and 7? So it's 2, 3, 1, and 4. Or the set containing 1, 2, 3, and 4. So as a set of ordered pairs, when we want to get the pre-image, all you have to do is to look at the second coordinates. Those second coordinates should belong in the set. And then just list down all the first coordinates. What about F inverse of the set containing 8? There is no 8 appearing as a second coordinate, so therefore this is just the null set. What about 9? What is this one? 9 appears here and the only element in F with second coordinate 9 is 5, 9. And therefore the first coordinate is 5. What about 7, 8, 9? So we have 7, 7, there's no 8, and then there's 9. So the set of first coordinates are 1, 3, and 5. Now, suppose that we have this function. This is our parabola. f of x equals x squared. Let us find the inverse image of x where x is positive. Let me just write what it means for a to be in f inverse of x. By definition, this means that f of a is an element of the set containing x only. In other words, f of a is equal to x, but our f of a is a squared. So therefore, what is our a? Remember, we are on the case x is greater than 0. So therefore, a is equal to 
plus or minus square root of x. Those are the two pre-images of x. So this is square root of x and negative square root of x if x is greater than 0. What about if x is less than 0? What will it be? This is less than 0. Is it possible for a squared to be equal to a negative number? No. So there, there is no such a. So therefore, this is the null set if x is less than 0. What about f inverse of 0? What is the only element which is mapped to 0? That is equal to 0. What about this one? What is the pre-image of the set? 1, 4. Let us try to draw the graph first. Just so that we have an idea of the answer and then we will prove it formally. So our graph is a parabola. And then we are looking at 1, 4. So this one. What are the elements whose um, images lie in 1, 4? It will be, so if we look at this, we look at this and we put it here along the x-coordinate because we are looking at the domain. What is that? That is the set, negative 1, negative 2, and then this is 1, 2. So therefore, this is the set, negative 2, negative 1, union, 1, so you have to prove this formally. So the proof of this is left as exercise. Here are some facts that follow directly from the definition. If A is in capital S, then definitely F of A is an element of F of capital S. F of capital S. Next, 2 and 3 is just the statement. Take note that these are just the same except for the direction. This is just a statement. A is an element of F inverse of T. If and only if F of A is an element of T. And this is exactly the equivalent statement that we wrote in the definition of pre-image sets. Take note that number one is saying A is an element of S implies f of a is also an f of a is an element of f of capital s however the converse is not true in general if f of a is in f of s then a is not necessarily in s for example if we consider the function f from the set of reals to the set of reals our parabola f of x equals x squared and s is equal to the closed interval 1 2 f of negative 1, which is equal to 1, 1 is an element of f of s. Right? What? Why is that? What is f of s? What will be the images of the closed interval 1, 2? It's going to be 1, 4. Correct? So 1 is an element of f of s, but... My negative 1 here is not an element of S. We will see later that the converse, F of A element of F of S, implies A is an element S, will be true if F is injective. Okay, If you add the hypothesis that F is injective, then this will be true. You can try it as an exercise. So here is a result on the image sets, what happens when we get the intersection and the union of subsets of A. So the first one is saying that the image of the intersection is just a subset of the intersection of the images. Number two is saying that the image of the union is equal to the union of the images. Let me prove the first one here. We want to show that f of c intersection d is a subset of f of c intersection f of d. So, since we are showing subset relationship, we will get an arbitrary element here. 
take note that the image set lies in the domain or the codomain. It lies in the codomain, correct? Because this is the image set. So let I will use small b just to make me re remember that this is an element of the codomain. Let b be an element of f of c intersection d. By definition, what, it, what does it mean for B to be an element of the image set? It means that you can write it as F of something and that something lies in this set. C intersection D. Okay, so remember, let me use heart and star. So star is an element of F of heart. This means that star can be written as f of smiley for some smiley element of heart. Okay, going back to our proof. So we have b is equal to f of a for some a element of c intersection d. So since a is in c, right, because it is an element of c intersection d, my b which is equal to f of a and this a is an element of c is an element of f of capital c because we considered a as an element of capital c moreover a is also in d right so therefore b which is equal to f of a and we considered a as an element of capital d so therefore, f of a is an element of f of d. So what have we shown here? We have shown that f of a, which is our b, so hence b is an element of the intersection of f of c and f of d. That concludes our proof. Here is a result regarding the inverse images the, or the pre-images so just like what we had in theorem one what will happen if we get the intersection of subsets of your codomain and then we get their pre-images so this one is actually easier if it's pre-images it's like you can just distribute it correct however be careful when you have image set for the intersection you just have subset relationship this is not these two are not equal in general again in the last uh, few slides we will see what condition will make this an equality i will prove the second one and then i will leave the proof of the first one as an exercise okay so i already copied the hypothesis we want to show that want to show here that the pre-image of E union F is just the same as F inverse E union F inverse of F. Okay, so let us prove this part. So we get an arbitrary element in here and where is this set lying? Is it lying on the domain or codomain? The pre-image is a subset of your domain. So therefore, I will use small a. Let a be an element of the pre-image of E union F. So this means that F of A, the image of this is an element of E union F, right? So this means f of a is an element of e or f of a is an element of f. I will just be using these symbols. I will not write using sentences because I want to show you something. But of course, for the formal proof, you have to use sentences. Okay. What does it mean for f of a to be in E? It means that, going back to A, A is an element of the pre-image of E. And then this means that A 
is an element of the pre-image of f. Always remember the definition. And what have we obtained here? This now means that a is an element of f inverse e. We have or here, so that becomes union. And we have just shown that this is a subset of this. So conversely, if we are starting with let a be an element of f inverse e, union f inverse f, what will happen? We will just go the other way around. So from here, that you get this, and then you get this, and then you get this. Correct? So that is why, do you already see why it is true that when we are showing equality, it is also the same as showing that this statement is true. E union F, if and only if. A is an element of F inverse E union F inverse of F. Okay, that is exactly what we did here. Okay, next. What will happen when we get the image of the pre-image? So take note that these are not equal. So you can not just sort of cancel. This, that does not happen. It will be a subset. What? about if you have the pre-image of the image this set will be smaller than this one i want you to imagine why is it true that something is bigger how come they are not always equal again it's because of the fact that f can be a many to one function it's it is not always one to one right so let me just draw possibilities just so that you know which one would be bigger. Okay, so suppose here, let's look at the first one. I have a subset D of B. This is my A, this is my B, and this is my function F. And then for a subset D of B, this is my D. First, I will get the pre-image. What can you say about the pre-image? It's going to be bigger or smaller than D. It's going to be at least bigger. Correct? Because our function F, it's possible for it to be many to one. Alright, so let's suppose that this is my pre-image F inverse of D. Now, when I get the image of this, when I get the image of this, it's saying that when I get the image of this set, it's going to be smaller than D. This is my F of F inverse of D. What about number two? Let us also draw what's happening there. This is my set C. First, what happens here? I'm going to get the image of C. So if I'm going to get the image of C, it will be a bit smaller than C. Something like that. There you go. Then here I'm going to use arrows to indicate that I'm getting the image. So this is my F of C. Now for this F of C, I'm going to get now the pre-image. Pre-image would be bigger. Anyway, it will contain the entire C. So this one here is pre-image of F of C. Let us now prove that. Let us prove the first one. So we have let F from A to B be a function. And suppose that D is a subset of B. Let me write down what we want to show. We want to show f of f inverse of d is a subset of d. So we start by getting an arbitrary element here and this one lies on the set b because this is the image set. So let b be an element of f of f inverse of d. 
Now, by definition, what, it, what does it mean if you belong in the image set? So it means that we can write B as the image of something, let's call that A, and that A lies here for some A in F inverse of D. But what does it mean for A to be an element of the pre-image of D? So since A is an element of the pre-image of D, it means that F of A, correct? When you get the image of this, this is an element of D. But what is our F of A again? That is our B. So thus, my B, which is equal to F of A, is now an element of D. So we started here. And we ended here that P is an element of D. So that proves number two. Next, we want to show, what do we want to show there? So we are starting with a subset of C. I mean of A. Suppose C is a subset of A. We need to show that C is a subset of F inverse of F of C. So just like what we did with number one, we will get let C be in capital C. So take note here that the image of small c, this is an element of F of capital C. Now I want you to recall this. What does it mean if F of, let's say, star is an element of heart? This means that star below in the pre-image of heart. Correct? That is a de the definition of pre-images. Right? So I used star and heart so that even if it is different, you have C, D, you will not be confused. So again, it's like you're getting inverse of both sets. So, if we now look at this one, this one is saying that this is my heart. So, we have that C is an element of the pre-image. My heart is F of C. We started with C element of capital C and we ended up with small c being an element of the pre-image of the image of C. That's the end of the proof. Next, um, we actually had this theorem earlier um, in our previous video lecture if f is a surjective function then f of capital a is equal to b take note that f of a is simply the range of f because f is surjective recall that if you have a surjective function everything here in b can be written as everything here can be written as the image of some element in A. Correct? So that is why, recall that if you have a surjective function, there are no extra elements in the codomain. No extra elements in the codomain, which means that the entire range of F is actually B. But the range of F, by definition, is actually the image set of the entire domain. Let us prove this. If we have the hypothesis that F is surjective, then this one will now be an equality. Let us look at the previous slides. From theorem 3, we only know that this is a subset of D. So if we have the condition that F is surjective, they will actually be equal. So for our proof, so by theorem three, we already know that F of F inverse of D is a subset of D. So therefore we will just prove the other way around.
for we start by getting an arbitrary element of D. We want to show that it belongs in this set. Now, what is the use of F being a surjective function? Take note that D is a subset of B. Since F is surjective, all the elements here in D can be written as the image of some element in A. Correct? Because there are no extra elements. Everything here can always be written as the image of something in A. Since F is surjective, we can write D as F of A for some A in capital A. What does it mean about A? It means that A is an element of the inverse image of capital D, correct? Because F of A is an element of something in capital D. Again, it might be confusing for you. We have here f of a that came from f of a which is equal to d but this d here is an element of capital d so let me just write it f of a is an element of d by definition this means a is an element of the pre-image of d so that's why i have that here okay why do i want that a is an element of the pre-image of d Using this one class in slide 9 of part 1, if something in an e is in S, when you get the image of that, it will belong to the image set of this set. So this is slide 9. So by slide 9, part 1, my f of a is an element of f of f inverse of D. But what is my f of a again? That is just equal to D. What have we shown here? D, I started with D in capital D. I ended up with D being an element of this set. So that concludes the proof. Next, this relationship here will be an equality relationship if f is injective. So from, uh, from what we have just shown, if we add the condition that F is surjective, this will be an equality. And then if F is injective, this will also be an equality. So for our proof, again, let me just copy the hypothesis. So by theorem 3, again, part 2, we already know that C is a subset of F inverse F of C. So... We need to show that F inverse of F of C is a subset of C. So thus, we get an arbitrary element in here, and that is a subset of your domain. So let me call that A. We want to end up with A being an element of C. What does this mean? I want to remove this F inverse notation here, so... I will put it on the other side sort of thing, right? So this would mean that f of a is an element of f of capital C. What does it mean for you to be in f of capital C? Don't look at this part. This is saying that you are an element of the image set. It means that you can be written as f of something in C, correct? So thus... My f of a will be equal to f of small c for some small c element of capital C. However, since f is injective, what can we now say? If you have an injective function, if the images are equal, then the pre-images must be the same. a must be equal to c. And there you go. This small c over here is an element of capital C. So we started out with A being an element of this set. We ended up with A being an element of C. Thus, C is a subset of F inverse F of... This is capital C. For our last theorem, take note that earlier in the theorem... 
one, we have shown that the image of the intersection is just a subset of the in of the intersection of the images. However, if we add the condition that f is injective, these two sets will be equal. So from theorem one, we already know even if f is not injective, f c intersection d is a subset of f of capital C intersection f of d. So we need to show the other direction. So therefore, we start with getting an arbitrary element here. And this lies in the domain or the codomain. This belongs in the image set, so it belongs in the codomain. So let's call that P, an element of F of capital C, intersection F of capital D. So hence, B is an element of F of capital C and B is an element of F of capital D. What does it mean for you to be an element of F of capital C? This is the image set. There exist small c element in capital C and small d element of capital D such that my B is equal to F of small c and B is equal to F of small d because of this one, right? So thus, we have f of c is the same as f of d. But then again, f is injective and I have here that two images are equal. What does it mean? The pre-images are equal. Since f is injective, c must be equal to d. Now, what about it if c is equal to d? Take note that C is an element of capital C and D is an element of capital D. So therefore, this C and D, which they are just the same, this is an element now of capital C intersection capital D. So hence, B is equal to F of C where small c is an element of c intersection d because c is also the same as d, correct? And what does it mean now if b is equal to f of something in the intersection? There you go. Your b is now an element of f of c intersection d. Let me write it here. This small c is an element of c intersection D, capital C, that's capital C. Therefore, B is an element of F of capital C intersection capital D.